Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV, host George Bachara. As always, we're sponsored by Goosehead Insurance, the Bachara Agency. This is another episode uh, coming to you from the road from New York City. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bachara. We are here actually in New York City still. Uh, that's Jeff Keane, by the way. He wants to say hi before he's ready to say hi. But Welcome to New York City. Where are we, Jeff? What city are we? Well, what part? We're of in the city? Bronx. Where? In the Bronx. Riverdale. In Riverdale. The... Riverdale, New York. Just that's the section of the Bronx. Uh, yeah, I think so. Actually, uh, we're west of Yankee Stadium, um, and then uh, south of Westchester. Really great spot. Easy to get into Manhattan. Easy to get out of Manhattan and into Westchester. Very. And uh, you know, kind of get some country living a little bit, or New York's version of country living, right? Yes. Okay, so um, we're here. Jeff was nice enough to uh, open up his house to us, um, and we're going to taste some wine. First of all, yeah. Jeff, a little bit about you for the group. Um, Jeff and I worked together in Morton's Palm Beach in God, 14 years ago, was yes, it? Yes, sir. About 14 years yeah. ago. Uh, Jeff has since moved on. I moved on, obviously. You're working for Quality Meats right now, right? Yes, I work for Quality Meats in Midtown Manhattan. We sell a shitload of wine. Or a big load of wine, on my bad. It's okay. Everybody yeah. knows that you're kind of yeah, degenerate, right. so it's fine. And <laughs> yeah. George and I worked at several establishments together. Yeah. yeah, Jeff's a really good friend of mine, and he knows a lot about wine. Um, certified sommelier for years. Uh, manager at several steakhouses. Uh, you went to CIA, right? I did. In Manhattan. I went to the uh, Culinary Institute of American Hyde Park, New York. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, hoity toity, big deal. Yeah. He's a lot smarter than I look. By the way, uh, Wine by the Bay TV t shirt there on Jeff, that's the classic. I've got the I drink it, but I wouldn't buy a t shirt, and we're sponsored by Goosehead Insurance. Um, and let's get into the wine right away. So we're going to do yeah. two wines. We're going to do a white and red. Um, I went over to Long's in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. And I bought uh, this, it's kind of sweaty, sorry about that. It's the uh, Oyster Bay Chardonnay from New Zealand. I think this is gonna be a bad look it's with the wine. Marlboro. Yeah, yeah, exactly, from Marlboro, New Zealand. Um, I'll take a like a still photo of this so you can get a better look at it. Um, this one is a 2020 Chardonnay, 13% uh, alcohol by volume uh, from New Zealand, Marlboro. Marlboro is up in the uh, south end, oh, sorry, the south island, but the northeast corner of the south That's right. island. Okay, so it's on the coast. You're gonna get some nice cooling breezes in there, so it's gonna provide a really good atmosphere for Chardonnay. So we're gonna do a little taste. As always, both of these wines have been open for two hours. Uh, the Chardonnay is gonna be warmer than you're probably gonna serve, but we wanna taste it to get all those notes. So we, so we drink it a little bit more, but that's all right. I've actually been to this venue. Have you? Yes, sir. Well, tell me about it. When I lived in New Zealand. Just fabulous. It was back in the 80s. Old school, it's such a great tour. The wine is just fabulous and crisp and clear and has been for all that time. I got a lot of apple on it, no? Huh? Give me some notes. Green, very green color. Not so much yellow, but more of like a green. It's like a Granny Smith apple. Yeah, for sure. I get that smoke. You know, that crispy, sweet crisp to it. Just delicious. I love this wine prepared this way. It does have a little tropical kind of something going on too, right? I mean, just a little. Apple for sure, but maybe Ooh. some... If anything, a little mango. A little of that sweet, yeah. upper sweet, you know what I mean? Just mixed in, but... Maybe a little uh, vanilla too, like a little Tahitian vanilla. On the nose, just just like a little third tertiary. Yeah, I, I actually felt it in my middle. Yeah. Delicious. Mm. Mm. Okay, as you want to And a beautiful wine. vineyard as well. Is it a beautiful vineyard? It's fucking, it's, it's very. It's easy, easy. This is a family it's, show, but it's, not really. It's a delightful vineyard to go check out when there are exclusive vineyards, you know, in New Zealand, because there's not too many that have this high you know, profile wine. Do they do tastings at the Yes, vineyard? they do. Or at least they use yes. the pre COVID, right? Yes, yes. But, no, that's, that's awesome. I actually, I picked this wine without actually realizing that you had been to the vineyard. I picked it because we're in New York and we got Oyster Bay, even though it's not Oyster Bay, New York. That's kind of why I kind of yes. picked it. But I really like this wine. Hate white wine, as you all know. I am not a white wine person. But this actually, again, I drink it, but I wouldn't buy it. $12.99 at Wong's. I mean, you can't go wrong, especially if you're having a party, if you're pouring a lot of wine for folks, first course or walking in, don't you think? I mean, this would be a good kind of... Such a delightful opening. 
you know, just everybody is just so great on the tongue and everybody's getting ready and then you maybe throw out that cat a little later. So, yeah. You know, something I'm still tasting it. Are you still tasting the finish? I'm tasting it like crazy. Yeah, this is a, this is a good wine in my opinion. Twelve ninety nine. You really can't go wrong. It's not scored professionally, but I mean, what would you give it as a, as a score if you had to score it? Well, right now? Yeah. Uh, 98. 98 points? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, you're generous. Uh, it tastes delicious. Yeah, it tastes what, delicious. What can I say? 92. Uh, you want honesty? 92. Honesty? 98, you're out of your mind. Okay, just a nice guy. What can I tell you? This is a, this is a really good white wine, though. All, all kidding aside, I don't think it's like overly like buttery and all that kind of thing. Like a, like it's a, a crisp and shark. honey. Yeah, it's a nice wine. I like about it. It's a nice wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna move on to wine number two. So Jeff, tell us when you worked for Morton's. I know you were a corporate trainer, yeah. manager, and all that. How many restaurants did you actually like work? Not to open, but like to. I worked be there. in fifty-five locations altogether. Okay, that was with the opening and everything. I'm talking I about. I did like, thirty openings, and I opened up. So I did other uh, gigs and. Another twenty some restaurants. Wow. So that's a lot. Yeah. But only one quality meats. Yeah, I've been <laughs> quality, there's only one quality meats. I've been quality meats since two thousand fifteen and it's been very good to me. Yeah. Um great memories of Morton's, sold a lot of great wine and I met my wife through Morton's. Yeah, you did, right. That's right. Sarah. Hey Sarah. Uh, hi. Say hi. Uh, hi. Okay. But well, since then I had to move on. Fair enough. Okay, so we're gonna go into a Barolo now. This is a 2016 uh, Barolo um, from, where we, well, from Barolo, obviously. Yeah, from Barolo. You know, <laughs> in Piedmont, so it's still kind of the northwest corner of Italy at the foot of the mountains. Um, Beautiful for the there. This is the bottle right here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to show it or not, but I will take a still photo so you can get a good yeah. shot at it, okay? And this is uh, Casal Comagnoli. Barolo, 2016 DOCG, 14.5 alcohol by volume. Let's put this right over here so everybody can see it. It's a very, the landscape there is unbelievable. It's just like the Sierra Nevada. Have you been there too? Really? Yes, I have. It's very similar to Sierra Nevada's in the foothills. The terrain, uh, the So are you saying we should, be, we should be growing wine in the Sierras in Nevada? No. Okay. Because they've been at it a lot longer. <laughs> I'm just saying that the, the, the weather's beautiful. I was trying to give people could give, give people a little bit of information. My bad. I'm, I'm just talking about the weather and the, just, just the, <laughs> the whole. I mean, okay. the Piedmont, that region of Piedmont is very similar to Sierra Nevada. You it's know what's surprising to me, though? This Barolo is very, very light. I'm very surprised. The coloring is like a. Almost like a brown, like a, like a very light brick color. But I mean, yes. super, like super translucent. I can see my fingers. I'm very surprised, actually. I thought it would be a lot darker. That no, was very Piedmontish. That was true, too. You know? Yeah. I had a Barolo the other day. That was very color. great the taste to them that only comes from that region, really. Are you getting any, like, where soil or mushroom or anything? Of course I am. Well, I mean, tell the folks. Don't, and where, tell, don't keep it to yourself. What are you smelling? This isn't a red from Sonoma, Napa. Obviously from, you know, Italy. It's the dark roots. It's just beautiful. Like, you smell the terroir. You smell the region. When Lots you of cherry, like, like mature cherry, well, almost like a kirsch, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. really good. All right, let's taste it. Come on. delicious. That's right on my alley. It's got a lot of acid on the tongue though. I like it. It's, but it's not heavy. It's, it's not even like a cab. It's like, very easy to beautiful drink. Beautiful finish, beautiful, easy to drink. That's, that's. Exactly Luton strawberry cough drops, uh, cherry cough drops it tastes like to me. Okay. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, see now he's just being a jerk. He just doesn't want to share his knowledge and he wants me to go out there on a limb and I'm like an idiot. What I like is things with a little less tannin. Yeah, and I don't think this is so, overly tannic, right? So light and refreshing. 
and you know it doesn't bite on your tongue. It's just so clean and fresh. I mean, this is gonna seem obvious, but I would say pasta course, red pasta course. Absolutely, fucking, absolutely, <laughs> or any seafood. <laughs> Yeah, anything with seafood. Like a shrimp probably always with that. Any course before the entree. If you, you know, you Would you do like a like a pork course, like a wine of pork or something like a roasted pork with this? With this, absolutely. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm not not a not a steak or anything. But this like, wine would go for anything from a seafood appetizer to a pork entree. It fits all the you know all the. The bases you need to to um, work with that dish. Mm -hmm. It's a very. It makes me pucker. It's dry. It has tannin, but it's not uncomfortable. But there's nothing it has really. Very balanced. And there's what would you compare it to in America? Really nothing. Not a pinot, because it, it's it's it's, I mean, it's lighter than a pinot. Maybe it's definitely certain... lighter than a cab. It just has its its own category. Which works Maybe so well. Sonoma Coast, you know. I mean, something cold climate. Yeah, a bit. little. Not, I mean, not exactly. It's a little. But it has bit. a lot of cherry. It has a lot of that it cherry stuff going on. It's really good. It's delicious. If you're if you're an Italian wine fan, like if, if you like the Chianti, and you've never had Barolo, yeah, this is a good right. way to go. It's a different yes. grape. Um, this is the uh, Nebbiolo grape, and the Chianti is the Sangiovese. But I mean, they're grown both in kind of well, Tuscany is more southern, but and more eastern, but. It's not that hot climate in, like, say, Sicily or you know Palermo or something like that. So it's the temperature, cooler climate, cooler climate, exactly. And like you said, the foothills. So yeah. you're going to get some of that. I guess the the snow melt comes down and kind of kind of informs the soil. I would think. Well, at the, in the evening, the, the cooler airs come down and it cools off the grapes. You know, and they and they stop their fermentation. They just they yeah, just they don't get like really a, rich. Well, they don't get yeah, really sugary. They take a break and they don't get sugary at all. Yeah, they don't have that that warmth. No, this is I. If again, if you don't want something super heavy, but you want something that's complex and like kind of changes over time while you're having your dinner, this is a really good way to go. And yes. frankly, you can drink this standalone. This is not too uh, too harsh. That you couldn't know. drink this standalone. You don't necessarily need food with this, which is not always true in Italian wine. That's right. So, um, yeah, well, how would you score this one? This got 92 points from, uh, from sorry, 93 points from James Suffolk. What do, you, what do you think? Well, I'm giving it 96. I'm sure you are. You know, it's delicious. It is good. I don't know if I'd go 96. And 93, 94, I'd say, is right where I would put it. I mean, what did I say this was uh, price-wise? I didn't. I think it was like 34.99. For thirty-four ninety-nine, right. that's an excellent price. I mean, right. this is a quality wine for sub forty dollars. I mean, it's definitely sub forty. I will put the price in the description box, and I'll probably put it under the screen too, so we'll get the accurate pricing. But uh, I know it's under forty dollars. So if you told me that I had to spend forty dollars to get a wine of this quality, I would, I would do it all day long. It's delicious. Yeah, I think both of these wines, at least from a value perspective, are really really good. Um, so Jeff. I'm probably not going to see you on camera for a little while. So, any words of wisdom for the people when they're buying wine in a restaurant? No, not not really. I mean, go with your gut. You know, the most expensive wine is not always the best wine. Do a little research. You know, check out the, especially like here in the, in the states, in California, what the best you know uh, vineyards are, and take your time. Don't rush anything, don't buy nothing cheap, don't buy nothing too expensive. Just research it out a little bit. There's all kinds of deals out there, just like George is telling you. And here's a couple of them. Yeah, I mean, you really can't do better price-wise. Um, I don't know if you'd see that Barolo on too many wine lists. I haven't seen it necessarily. But this this Oyster Bay, I have seen on some wine lists. Maybe not your high-end restaurants, but your bistros, that kind of thing. You'll find uh, oh, some yeah. New Zealand Chardonnays and soft blocks or whatever. So I think that's something that you can seek out. And it'd probably be probably double the price, maybe like thirty dollars for the bottle on a list. But still, I mean, when you're out, thirty dollars for a, for a Chardonnay you're gonna enjoy. Why not? You might as well, right? Get out of here. You know? Exactly. Forget about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And I mean, it's delicious. I mean, the bottom line is George is turning you into two delicious wines. Way below what they should be priced at. And your checks in the mail, by the way. So that's good news. So I'm just saying. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're signing off from Riverdale in the Bronx, New York. That's George. That's Jeff. 
I'm George, Wine by the Bay TV, and we'll see you again next time. Riverdale.